If you have trouble working out on shoulder and chest day because of the pain in the front of your shoulder, then stick around for my personal warm up to help you get rid of your shoulder pain in 17 minutes or less. Adam here from trainingmassage.com. Now, one of the most common ways for improving your shoulder pain is to train the weaker muscles in the back of the shoulder. And even though this isn't wrong, this may not work for everybody who has shoulder pain. If you didn't know, the most likely reason for having that kind of shoulder pain is going to be instability within the shoulder joint, which is why they have you train the muscles in the back of the shoulder because it's going to create more stability. But have you ever wondered why it's always the muscles in the back of the shoulder that we always need to strengthen? You see, being a sports massage therapist, I'm able to see the body in a different pattern. And in my own perspective, I'm going to be targeting the muscles that are short and tight versus the muscles that are weakened and lengthened. And the reason why I like to focus on these short and tire muscles in the first place is because I believe it's these muscles that are creating your instability and even those weak muscles. But how does that happen? You see, there are certain muscles within the body that we use on a daily basis. And it's these muscles that we are using that's also becoming short and tight and most likely creating the instability within your shoulder. It's the muscles in the front of the shoulder that become shorn and tie in, creating the instability within the shoulder, which also creates the lengthened muscles in the back of the shoulder as well. And instead of trying to strengthen the muscles in the back of the shoulder to create that stable joint and lengthen the muscles in the front, we are actually going to be targeting these shortened muscles first to release that tension so the exercises can be 10 times easier. And that's why I'm gonna be showing you how to release these shorn and tighter muscles using some self-massage techniques. Plus, I'm also gonna be showing you where to plug in those exercises your doctor gave you so that the shoulder pain doesn't return. The first muscle you will want to work on is going to be the pec major and the pec minor. To get things started, grab a foam roller and begin rolling out the chest for 30 seconds. Make sure to go from the sternum, which is on the inside of the chest, all the way to the edge of the pec major. From here, grab a smaller ball like the medium sized ball and place it on the pec minor. You can find the pec minor by aiming for the top corner of the chest, right next to the shoulder. Now go ahead and pin down the most tender spot and perform a pin and stretch for 30 seconds. Next up is the anterior deltoid. Sticking with the same ball, move it slightly over until it's on the anterior deltoid. From here, find the most tender spot and perform micro movements for up to 30 seconds. After performing micro movements, change up the technique and perform a pin stretch for another 30 seconds. To work on the lats and the terries major, grab your foam roller and roll over to your side as you place the foam roller underneath your armpit and upper back. Now go ahead and find the most tender spot and begin performing some micro movements for 30 seconds. Now from here, perform a pin and stretch by taking that arm through its full range of motion for another 30 seconds. By working on the lats near the armpit, you're also able to work on that teres major as well. So now that we've gone through all these superficial muscles, we can now dive into the deeper muscles that can also be creating your shoulder pain. The first muscles we're going to be hitting are going to be the infraspinatus and the teres minor, which are your rotator cuff muscles on the back of the shoulder. In order to to target this muscle, all you need to do is work on the rear delt with a tool like a 5 inch ball for roughly 1 minute. You can perform either micro movements or a pin and stretch by pinning down the most tender spots and swinging your arm back and forth in front of the body. Next up is going to be the supraspinatus. To release this muscle, use a massage cane to apply pressure to the area between the scapula and the clavicle. From here, perform some micro movements on the most tender spot for roughly one minute. The final rotator cuff muscle we're going to be hitting here is going to be the subscapularis, which is located on the fronts of the scapula. Now, the best way to reach it is by using your other arm to reach over and grab the inside of the armpits, aiming for the bone on the back of the shoulder, which is your scapula. By aiming for that part in the armpit, this is going to help your thumb land on the inside of that scapula on top of that subscapularis. From here, you can perform either micro movements by going back and forth and side to side with your thumb, or a pin stretch by pinning down the most tender spots and moving your arm internally and externally. Now I know I went through these muscles pretty fast, but that's because I'm going to be going through a complete follow along video for you to go through with me. And on top of that, I'm also going to be showing you some different exercises to do at the very end of these sub massage techniques so your pain doesn't return. So make sure to stick around for the full routine because I am going to be showing you some tips and tricks along the way. Now the first thing we want to do is take that foam roller and place it near the sternum on the chest and just begin rolling out the entire muscle in order to pretty much 
warming up and even look for a tender spot. Because after this, we can either perform our next techniques on the most tender spot you find, or we can simply move on into the pec minor, which is a big problem with a lot of people who have shoulder pain. So what you're gonna do is take a small, like a five inch ball, and place it right there on the pec minor, which is right next to the shoulder in that upper corner of the chest. Now from here, all we're gonna do is perform a pin and stretch by taking that arm through its full ranges of motion in order to help strip out that pec minor. Now from here, we can simply move into the anterior deltoid, shift that over a little bit onto the muscle. I like to place my arm behind my back, do it if you can, don't worry about it if you can't. And now from here, let's start with micro movements by going back and forth and side to side. Now we can simply do something like a pin and stretch. All we have to do here is take our arm through its full range of motion. And we can do that by reaching up behind us in order to help stretch it out. So we can't really get it into a flex position really. So we can start off with a neutral and then try to extend our arm in order to help stretch it out. And now from here, I just repeat everything on the other side. Get that ball and then let's pin down that pick minor and do a pin a stretch. Of course, if you don't want to do a pin stretch, you could also do something like micro movements by just going back and forth on it. The difference is the limbs moving through the pin stretch, the micro movements, um, your body's basically moving. All right, shift over to the anterior deltoid and let's do some micro movements. Now, let's get a pin and stretch going. All right, let's change it up. Let's move into our lats. Take your femur, lay on your side and on your back near the armpit. And now from here, we're simply just gonna go back and forth and side to side in order to begin working the lats. The idea here is to not be exactly on it around your side, but to roll to your back a little bit in order to really target your lats and even the teres major. Now, one thing I like to do here as well 
I had to grab it and pull it in order to do those micro movements as opposed to me moving on it. So from here, let's do a pin and stretch. Take that arm through its full ranges of motion as the muscle is pinned down. Of course, you also have all your body weight here on it. So expect it to be a little tender. And now let's just change sides and repeat. And now let's do a pin and stretch. All right, now from here, we're just gonna simply move up into the standing position. Now from here, we're gonna be hitting the infraspinatus. All we wanna do is take something like our five inch ball and place it on our rear delt in order to begin performing our micro movement. Of course, you can also use something like a smaller ball here. If the five inch ball isn't doing it for you, if it's not getting deep enough into the muscle. So again, go back and forth, side to side on that most tender spot. Now from here, all we're going to do is simply perform a pin and stretch by bringing that arm across the body and even behind it a little bit in order to help stretch out that infraspinatus on the back. All we're going to do now is change sides and repeat, starting with micro movements. And now go back to your pin and stretch and try to take that arm through its full ranges of motion. Now let's get into that supraspinatus. All we're gonna do is use these little knobs to target the muscles between the clavicle and the scapula. Go ahead and press down through that upper trap, hold it there because it can get a little slippery, and then go back and forth and side to side for the next minute. Now, of course, you can perform a pin and stretch here as well. All you have to do is pin down that muscle, take that arm up, and then stretch it by pulling it straight back. 
Not the easiest technique to do when you're doing it by yourself with this kind of tool. But if you're able to get it, then kudos to you because it will help release it and stretch it out a little more. So go ahead and do whatever you prefer to do for your super spinatus. And now what we're gonna do is change sides and repeat. It's getting hot in here. So take off all your clothes. I want to take my clothes off. Sorry. So in order to hit that subscapularis, reach that arm forward in order for that scapula to come out, which then allows you to reach your arm in there, get that thumb into that armpit in order to access that subscapularis. Once you're on it, go ahead and do your micro movements in order to begin releasing it. You can see basically that I'm just kind of pinching and pulling and pressing in with my thumb in order to help work that muscle. Now from here, besides a micro movement technique, we can also do a pin and stretch by pinning the muscle down while it is internally rotated. From here, we're going to pin it and externally rotate as far as we can in order to help stretch it out. So go ahead and do this for the remainder of the time. Now, of course, if you have trouble reaching over with your other hand, no problem. Use a broomstick. Same exact thing. Reach your arm forward. Use the edge of the broomstick in order to get access into that subscap. Now from here, just simply move that broomstick back and forth and side to side in order to begin releasing that muscle. Woo, this one's tender. Now let's do our pinna stretch. Now take your mini band, wrap it around your hand with your palms facing up. Take your elbows and place them in front of the body. And now from here, we're going to perform some external rotation. Hold it out there for a few seconds, and then let it return back to its normal position before you repeat for the next minute. You're trying to get as many reps as you can while also following the correct tempo here. Now, we want the elbows in front of the body as opposed to next to it because of the rear delts. If the rear delts are next to it, or sorry, if our elbows are next to our body, the rear delts will be activated with our infraspinatus if the elbows to the side. But with them in front, then the rear delts get put on a stretch, but the infraspinatus still gets to get worked. So with the elbows in front, we get to target the rotator cuff muscles without targeting the rear delts.
Now grab your pull up band, palms face up again, bring your arms up in front of the body. And now we're gonna be doing front pulls with the palms facing up. The goal here is to make sure that your scapula is doing the movement and pulling the arms apart as opposed to just letting your arms do the movement. So if we were to, if we were able to see my back, we will see the scapula move first before the uh, arms go moving. And then you'll see the arms returning before that scapula does as well. So again, we want that scapula to initiate the movement. And then we want that scapula to be the last thing that contracts as well. So make sure to perform as many reps as you can. Hold it in the contracted position for a few seconds and let it return back to its starting position. Now from here, go ahead and grab a mini band, place it around your arms, palms facing inward, get some um, tension between your hands or between the band. And now we're simply going to be doing a press up. Press straight up into the air, let it return back to its starting position and then repeat. The key here is to make sure you're keeping that tension going outwards the entire time so that the muscles in the back of the shoulder are able to strengthen. And since we just released all the muscles in the front of the body that are most likely creating that instability in the first place, now those muscles in the back are able to fire up even more, which will hopefully prevent that pain from returning. And that is it for your full blown routine. Let me know in the comment section how you like this kind of new format where you're just doing a follow along with me. Now, if you didn't have any relief from doing this kind of treatment, then make sure to check out the video in the top right corner because that may be your problem and not this. I'll see you in the next one. Uh, look at that sweat. <laughs>